What's going on, guys? Dave Mate from Circle the Drink. We are uh, live again. This is another online Yerba Mate circle, or just for short, it's an online circle. A circle is where we come together and we elevate minds, we elevate bodies, we elevate spirits, and we usually drink uh, a powerful superfood, uh, whether that's Yerba Mate, uh, Spirulina, Moringa, or all sorts of powerful herbs out there on the planet Earth. Uh, today we're actually going to be talking about three herbs. Uh, I apologize for last week. We were uh, scheduled to talk about Moringa, which is a powerful superfood, but uh, we had some complications with Google. Excuses aside, don't worry, we're here today talking about it. Uh, <clears throat> thank you guys very much for being here. Again, this is an online circle, so uh, participants are welcome to call in. We have a number, 917-889-9947, uh, if you want to call in ask questions or share some information with the world through our Circle of Drink channel. Uh, and people watching this on Google Plus or any Google platform or even on YouTube, uh, there should be ways for you to interact with us during this circle. There should be ways for you to uh, share your audio or share your video to jump in on this circle. If not, just sit back, relax, and I'm going to be talking about these three herbs, starting with Moringa, uh, heading into spirulina, and then we'll top everything off with yerba mate. All right, guys. So I was recently in Jamaica. I spent about a week in Jamaica not too long ago, and I saw so many people in the hills of the country uh, growing this particular tree called moringa. Now, I've known about moringa for several years now, but I never really became fully acquainted with it. Uh, it wasn't until I saw the plant again and I saw so many people drinking it and, and talking about it uh, during my trip in Jamaica that I was inspired to reconnect with this herb, to learn more about it, and to share what I learned with you guys because that's what this is all about. This is about sharing information, uh, passing on these uh, traditional remedies, these foods, and these power super teas to drink and you know to live a, a prosperous life in all areas. So let me prepare some yerba mate right now because you guys know me. I like to drink my yerba mate while we're having these circles. And again, that number is 917-889-9947 for any of you adventurous souls that want to call in and uh, share some information with us. Okay. Let me make some mate. I'm drinking some uh, Del Cebador yerba mate from... Brazil, growing for the Uruguayan market. Yerba mate, which you guys will get into in a bit. You guys, a lot of you guys are already acquainted with yerba mate, but for those of you who aren't, you're in for a surprise. This stuff is very powerful, superfood. All right, let's start with moringa. I took some notes down. All right, guys. So Moringa, uh, the scientific name is Moringa, Moringa olifiera, Moringa olifiera, and this is a subtropical to tropical plant that grows, uh, that originated in the Himalayas, north uh, in the northern areas of Argent. I'm sorry, I was about to say Argentina, but India, the country India. Um, this plant is a shrub. It's a small. It's a tree that could grow very tall, but in most situations, people keep it as a short shrub. Uh, it grows pretty rapidly. Uh, within a few months of germination, the plant could grow upwards of three to four feet. Most people cut the top of the plant once it reaches about five feet and allow the plant to grow outwards into a thick shrub for purposes of harvesting the leaves. Uh, you People could even consume the roots, the bark. The entire plant is edible. Um, now this plant has been around for thousands of years, but only for the past couple hundred years uh, has modern civilization kind of learned about this plant and started using it uh, on a more open scale in terms of sharing it with other nations, sharing it with other cultures. But I would venture to say most people watching this right now haven't even heard of Moringa. Uh, this is not surprising. There's so many superfoods out there, so many things that really 
have been proven to help heal the body, help heal the mind, and help offer uh, clean energy that hasn't been promoted. Nobody knows about these things, just like Yerba Mate. Most people still don't know about Yerba Mate. Most people still don't know about spirulina. Most people still don't know about moringa, which is ironic because these are some of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet Earth. Uh, so moringa, like I said, it's a shrub native to India, uh, subtropical, tropical regions. Now it could grow. Uh, it does grow in all places of the world right now, all warm climates. So we're talking uh, South America. We're talking the uh, Carib Caribbeans, you know, Jamaica, Haiti, Cuba, uh, Central America, uh, even warm climates in the United States, Moringa can grow and proliferate. Uh, out in the West Coast, Moringa is growing over there. A lot of people in California are growing it. Arizona are growing it. But as you head further east in the United States, uh, the, the climate becomes more temperate. And uh, what's up? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can leave it. Excuse me. As the climate becomes more temperate, uh, you, the, the, the growing season is shortened. So if you grow here, like in New York, you could grow it in the warmer months from May to, let's say, September. But after September, it's uh, recommended to bring it into the house to protect it from frost. All right, guys. So Moringa, think of it as a sort of green tea, so to speak. It's extremely dense with nutrients, antioxidants, and proteins. Okay. Uh, some of the health benefits of Moringa uh, are as follows. It's a natural energy booster. It boosts energy without having to worry about caffeine without having to worry about jitters. You know, this is what I love about these sort of herbs. You don't have to worry about the caffeine and you get all the benefits that you would get as if you were drinking something that's caffeinated without all the negative effects. So what I find with Moringa is that it kind of gently opens up my mind. It kind of gently eases me into a higher level of cognition. Uh, it kind of just stimulates my mind and my body to get going. So I recommend for the first time, if you really want to see the effects of Moringa waking you up and giving you energy, I would recommend drinking it in the morning on an empty stomach and uh, seeing how you feel. So moving along, Moringa has a very unique ability to detoxify the body. Moringa is one of the best detoxifying agents out there in terms of plants, okay? Now, the plant doesn't only detoxify the body, but it has other applications. It actually detoxifies water. So say, for instance, you have, you're out in the forest and the only thing you could drink is some muddy, dirty, uh, bacteria uh, infested water. What are you going to do? Well, all you would need is a few Moringa seeds to save your life in this situation. You would break up the Moringa seeds into a powder, okay? And the ratio is about 20 grams. So for those of you that are kind of good with measurements, you, you understand what 20 grams is of dry weight. Uh, it's just about a couple heaping teaspoons, let's call it, of this Moringa powder. And you would add that up to about a liter of water. And what is done is this. The Moringa actually acts as a coagulant and it coagulates, brings together all the uh, toxins in the water and it makes it into sort of a white powder. And this white powder floats to the bottom of the vessel. Now, what you do is once that occurs, it takes about an hour, you put the vessel into direct sunlight, which helps to further uh, expedite the, the detoxification process. After about another hour of the water resting in direct sunlight, scientists have said that this process removes upwards of 98% of the toxins in the water. 98% of the toxins in the water are gone. They're on the bottom. You just don't drink the bottom. You drink everything on top. Uh, so Moringa has applications in terms of life and death situations and in terms of saving people, allowing people to drink clean water. Unfortunately, we live in a world where uh, probably upwards of several hundred million people every day don't have access to clean water. That's sad. That's disgusting. And we need to do something about that. Uh, Moringa is one of those plants that can help change the world in that respect. Uh, Moringa is a natural antibiotic, okay? Uh, it helps destroy bad bacteria. Uh, now, this bacteria 
is not only bacteria inside the body, but this is bacteria topically on top of the body. So a lot of people actually use uh, Moringa to put onto, uh, yeah, put onto uh, burns and cuts. It's called a poultice. So a poultice is uh, basically in more ancient times, people would just chew up the leaves, spit it out, and put it onto their arm and let their cut its heal. Nowadays, people are a little bit more sanitary, I guess, and they just mulch up the leaves, put that into you know some sort of napkin or uh, cotton container uh, fabric and put that onto your arm, and that's it. It'll help clean out the wound. It'll help you recover from a wound. And it'll reduce inflammation in case you have like a swollen ankle, sprained ankle. You could also apply the warm leaves, uh, the leaves mulched up, add it to warm water, and then apply it onto some sort of pad onto your arm or a leg, wherever the, the wound may be or the swelling is. So, of course, that means that Moringa is also anti-inflammatory. It decreases inflammation. Uh, in the muscles, it, uh, people who have also internal situations with muscles, uh, inflamed muscles such as bron bronchitis, uh, respiratory problems, Moringa is great for that. If you have asthma or if you have problems breathing, Moringa tea could help you uh, alleviate those symptoms. Uh, it, any herb that has high levels of antioxidants, that has high levels of minerals and nutrients and vitamins is always gonna uh, boost the immune system. So Moringa is a natural immune booster. It'll boost your immune system. And as you guys have heard me say many times already, when you boost your immune system, you're essentially allowing your body to really function on, a high, on the highest level that it can. So if your immune system is compromised, your body is working to protect itself from disease and bacteria because your immune system is compromised. But if your immune system is bolstered by dense, nutrient-rich food sources, then your immune system is allowed to kind of just be what it is and do what it's able to do without overtaxing uh, other faculties of your mind and your body. Uh, it promotes digestion. So these sort of uh, green foods, particularly foods with high levels of chlorophyll, such as Moringa, uh, chlorophyll acts as a natural uh, uh, digestion aid. Uh, it's a very interesting compound chlorophyll. Uh, it does many things, uh, helps protect the heart. It helps kind of, in, in many ways, it acts as an antioxidant. I guess you could consider chlorophyll an antioxidant. Uh, helps protect the heart and helps decrease, you know, bad cholesterol, many things chlorophyll does. Uh, but in this respect, you know, we're talking about chlorophyll for increasing digestion. Moringa is great for increasing digestion. Uh, if you have ulcers or any problems, irritation in your GI tract, your stomach, your gastrointestinal tract. Uh, Moringa is great for that. It helps to, uh, in some cases, Moringa has cured ulcers. Uh, many people use it to kind of prevent ulcers or to help uh, mitigate the harmful effects of ulcers. Uh, moving on, uh, my uncle takes Moringa. For instance, when I was in Jamaica, my uncle had a whole bunch of Moringa drying in a shed. And being as curious as I am, I had a nice conversation with him. I said, hey, uncle, you know, what's, what is this Moringa tree? What is everyone using it for here in Jamaica? And he said, you know what, Dave, I'll tell you the truth. I have high blood pressure and the pills that the doctors give me don't really help that much. But the thing that I found that helps me the most is when I use the Moringa and I continue to take my blood pressure medicine as well. So for him, anecdotally speaking, speaking Moringa helps decrease his high blood pressure. Uh, through my own research of reading different studies and different texts on Moringa, uh, that continued to come up too, Moringa helping lower blood pressure. Now, of course, it must be said that everything I'm saying in this video is for educational purposes only. Please consult with your own medical care practitioner if you have any questions about taking herbs. Um, moving along, Moringa helps lower uh, blood sugar levels, helps regulate glucose, so if you have diabetes, Moringa may be uh, beneficial for you. Sorry, guys. Uh, just replying to something. 
the life, the life of running a business. You know, you're always replying to texts and things like that. Uh, okay, let's keep it going, guys. I'm just keeping it real. You know, I'm running a business too, so I got to keep that going as well. And last but not least, when it comes to Moringa, uh, and I know this sounds kind of ethereal and kind of hippie-ish, but it really does induce a sense of well-being. And it, that, that's just science. It's really not hippie, this hippie, that. It's just science, scientifically proven that certain compounds induce feelings of well-being, induces feelings of relaxation. So interestingly, and not too unlike Yerba Mate, Moringa has the dual ability to not only wake you up and energize you in the morning, but it also has the ability to help bring you down a notch, help you relax and feel calm. Now, I just want to mention uh, one particular study on Moringa that was done in Africa. Now, when you think about Moringa, you have to really talk about what's going on in Africa. Moringa literally has become a lifeline for many Africans, for many African nations. Uh, I don't want to say Africans, that's not correct, but people in African nations. Uh, Moringa has literally brought people back from the brink of death. Uh, there was one study where there was 45 malnourished uh, children. Uh, a lot of them, about half of those people were, uh, those children were on the brink of death. They were almost dead. Uh, Moringa was used on all of them, mostly in form powder added to uh, their food. Um, a lot of the mothers that were feeding these children too were started to, to supplement their diets of Moringa. And all but three of these 45 children went on to not only survive but thrive unfortunately three of them died but uh moringa helped save almost all of them now it's a study done in africa uh in in the description of this video i'm going to list all my sources so you guys know i'm not just making these things up these are all scientific sources uh, everything i say is coming from science and it's coming from published information uh so when i think moringa uh, I really almost in some degrees more than mate. We'll talk about mate in a bit, but when I think about moringa, I think about an easy sh a shrub that is easy to grow, very easy to grow. Any warm climate, it will grow. It's tolerant resistant, shade resistant, so the plant is very versatile. Okay, so in nations where people don't have access to clean water, don't have access to consistent con consistent food, which is probably a billion people. In the world right now moringa is literally a lifesaver it's very easy to grow one or two plants of of moringa on your own property in jamaica it's very common for people to grow two three plants on their property and every week you just clip the the, the fresh leaves once you clip the fresh leaves you mm -hmm. could saute it like how you would saute spinach uh you can just eat the leaves the raw leaves like salad uh, you could pick the, the, the pods that hold the beans and make that like you would make string beans. Uh, you could dry the leaves and create a loose leaf tea. That's what I like doing. I drink Moringa tea now every day. Uh, you could crush the leaves up with some of the twigs and make a powder. Drink the powder, add the powder to your smoothie, uh, add the powder to soups and stews. Uh, you could even eat the bark. Uh, you could even eat the flowers and make the make it a flower tea. A lot of people make moringa flower tea. Uh, so literally, the entire plant could be consumed. I would uh, caution you to be careful though with the roots. The roots do have some high concentrations of certain alkaloids, very low concentrations of certain alkaloids that are harmful to the human organism. So though people do use the root, the root is more for sp specific applications, for specific ailments of the body. I wouldn't recommend using the root as a general tonic or a general food. Uh, so do your own research when it comes to the root. But everything else above the ground level, uh, based upon my research, seems to be very safe to consume. Uh, and I like to focus on the leaves. I'm a leafy guy. I just like the leaves a lot. And, you know, I don't really mess with the root. Uh, the twigs, I do mess with as well. All right. So, Moringa, if I want to get anything clear, make anything clear to you guys, think about Moringa in terms of, you know, something to help save the world, something to help fight malnutrition. But here in North America, in Europe, Canada, these things are like luxury items for us. That's just the truth.
You know, we're not as fortunate. Uh, uh, many people are not as fortunate as we are. Uh, every time I go to a, a, a quote unquote third world nation, and I've been to many, and I see what's happening out there, it breaks my heart. I've seen children eating raw meat off the street. I've seen people willing to do many things just for a couple US dollars so they could feed their family at night. You know, I've seen people naked because they didn't have any shoes and didn't have any clothes, just walking around. You know, I've seen people rob other people, not because they're evil or bad, but because they literally were hungry and they had no other recourse. So when it comes to Moringa and not, and not only Moringa, but the other things we're going to be talking about tonight, I look at these things as more than just these, you know, uh, new age herbal supplements that here in America are, are they're like the next big thing for us. You know, it's so easy for any one of us to just go to the store and buy them. Uh, and that's all good and well. And I promote that. And I love that. Uh, who knows? I may even be involved in these certain herbs on a commercial scale in the future. But uh, I really more so am, and am interested in how these herbs can help people who are dying, how these herbs can help people who are starving. Something must be done, and we need pioneers to step up and to help alleviate this global uh, situation of starvation and malnutrition. So that's Moringa, guys. I think you should look more into it. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Order some online. Go to a health food store. Get some and just try it. Start drinking it every day and see what happens. All right, guys, let's move on to uh, spirulina. And just to remind anybody that's interested in calling in, uh, you're able to do that anytime you want. Don't worry about interrupting me. You're not interrupting me. That's just a part of what this is, a circle. Uh, the number is 917-889-9947. Again, that number is 917-889-9947. Four, seven for anybody that wants to call in let me take a few sips of mate Woo, hot 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 caliente let me reply to a, a question customer service okay guys let's talk about spirulina this is a very interesting organism single cell organism okay now, spirulina is literally at the beginning of the food chain. It's at the beginning of the food chain. Spirulina is the precursor to all plant forms, perhaps to all life forms on the planet Earth right now. Spirulina has been around for billions of years. It was the first single cell organism to, to, to use the power of the sun to create food otherwise known as photosynthesis, okay? So spirulina is a plant, technically, but it's sort of on the evolutionary cusp between a plant and an animal. Why is that? Because spirulina is interesting in that it lacks that sort of a thick cellulose membrane that is characteristic of all plants. Spirulina doesn't really have that. Uh, and it doesn't really have a clear nucleus Okay, so spirulina is what you will call a nuclear plant, which is in between a plant and, let's say, a regular land organism, a regular land animal. Uh, so spirulina being at the beginning of the food chain, it has evolved into a way where it doesn't really absorb, it doesn't really, uh, it's not really affected by toxic material. In fact, it actually cleans toxic material. So uh, spirulina is a very clean food source. It's naturally clean. It lives in waters that are have a high levels of pH. It lives in waters that have extremely dense amounts of nutrients and minerals uh, from the earth. Remember, spirulina has been around for billions of years. It's been absorbing minerals from mountains and rocks and uh, other life forms for thousands of years, other maybe potentially other forms of bacteria, things like that. So spirulina is very old. It's very ancient. Uh, it, it's derived from uh, Mexico, uh, but now grows in several regions of the world in these particular ponds. Now, 
what's ironic is that spirulina grows only in areas that are so densely rich with nutrients and minerals that it's unsafe for other organisms to grow. So the way that it grows in such a high uh, nutrient rich environment, other uh, organisms, cannot, organisms cannot grow in those environments. So spirulina just has the space and the room to uh, become a superfood. It has evolved into a superfood. So let's talk about uh, some of the benefits of spirulina. Uh, again, this, uh, re this video is kind of focused on uh, healing the world, uh, helping to fight malnutrition and hunger. And I believe that spirulina, along with moringa, along with yerba mate, is right there. I personally don't know of any other plants other than, you know, there's thousands of other plants and plants that are comparable to these. But from my own research over the past, let's call it 10 years of looking into herbs, looking into plants and remedies and, you know, compounds, these three plants, Moringa, Spirulina, and Yerba Mate, these three single herbs, I'll call Spirulina an herb just for simplification. These three herbs really have the potential to, to maybe eradicate world hunger. Okay, so let's continue with spirulina, some of the health benefits of spirulina. Uh, like moringa, it helps to maintain blood glu glucose levels. People with diabetes, moringa is, I'm sorry, uh, spirulina is good to consume, helps keep your sugar levels in check. Uh, for people who are anemic, definitely pay special attention to moringa. Um, why do I keep on saying moringa? To spirulina. Uh, spirulina is pretty interesting in that scientists theorize that the the uh, I think it's actually the magnesium in in spirulina could actually be replaced with hemoglobin that's already in our body, obviously. Now, people who are anemic, who lack uh, this sort of uh, red blood cell volume, and they lack the proper oxygen-carrying vehicles of blood, these platelets, could use uh, spirulina to, to literally or theoretically rebuild blood. There's been research in Japan shown that people who were severely anemic that supplemented their, their uh, diet with spirulina showed marked improvement and sometimes 100% uh, cured their anemia. In some cases, 100% cured their anemia. So uh, a lot of women have problems with anemia, uh, more so than men. Uh, so spirulina is definitely something to look into. Uh, and let me just take a step back and talk about the forms of spirulina, okay? Now, when I first found out about spirulina 10 years ago, I was taking uh, powder. I was just grabbing the powder, buying it in the big tubs, and just mixing it into water and knocking it back. I'm going to be honest. It tasted like garbage. I didn't like the taste at all. Uh, and I'm kind of, I'm partial to bitter things. You know, I like mate and moringa's even a little bitter. But spirulina is really kind of fishy, tasty uh, tasting. So what I did was after a year or two of taking the powder, I switched over to the tablets. And now remember, spirulina is a food. So you could take pretty much as much as it as you want. I used to just take about 10 tablets, 20 tablets, knock it back with water. They're tasteless. They're just little tiny tablets. You could just take 5, 10, 20 of them a day, okay? And that's your serving for, for uh, spirulina. I was about to say moringa. Uh, as I continued my path on health and wellness of the mind and of the body, I eventually phased uh, uh, onto uh, the flakes. Now I like the, the the spirulina flakes. The flake form is pretty nice because it's kind of like the powder, but it's like those fish food flakes, and they're tasteless. They don't taste like anything. So you could just take a couple heaping tablespoons of the flakes, mix it with water, knock that back, and that's all you need for your spirulina. Okay. So continuing on with the health benefits of spirulina. Uh, it boosts the immune system, of course. Uh, it has uh, the ability to help your liver recuperate faster. So people who have liver problems taxing the body from all sorts of issues with the liver, spirulina could help you with that. Uh, spirulina 
has shown to uh, reduce the effects of ulcers, and in some cases, like Moringa, has actually cured ulcers, cured ulcers. Uh, it's very good for the eyes. Uh, it prevents uh, uh, white blood cell uh, uh, loss for people who are dealing with radiation and chemotherapy treatments. For those of you who have cancer, fighting cancer, uh, spirulina may be good for you. Uh, another thing to take note of with spirulina, and this is probably one of the best applications of spirulina, is that it, it removes toxins and heavy metals from the body. It removes toxins and heavy metals from the body. So a lot of us, especially you guys who are into uh, homeopathy, health food, things like that, you know that a lot of us suffer from heavy metal toxins in the body, whether that's from uh, fillings, cavity fillings, or from environmental uh, exposure, just from the earth, from pollution, things like that, from foods that we're eating. We need to detoxify our bodies. Spirulina removes these toxins and these heavy metals from the body and helps us to proceed without all these toxins hampering us down. And it also has shown to help provide, uh, prevent Alzheimer's disease and to help reduce the effects of Alzheimer's disease. So spirulina, guys, very powerful pond scum, very powerful allergy, high levels of chlorophyll. As I said before, chlorophyll acts as an antioxidant. Uh, it helps detoxify the body, uh, cardiovascular health, uh, good for digestion. Uh, uh, spirulina is a com complete protein. I think it's about 70% protein. The spirulina is 70% protein. How much, what's the percentage of protein in meat? I think that's about 20% protein meat is. Spirulina is 70% protein. It has all the essential uh, amino acids and it has 10 of the 12 non-essential amino acids. Uh, and having such a high level of the B vitamins uh, and uh, plenty of other new uh proteins spirulina is a perfect uh building food for building up proteins in the body because remember in order to build proteins in the body you need the you need the, the raw material the body doesn't have the ability to just store uh amino acids to to build protein later it doesn't work like uh like glucose levels your body has the ability to store sugars so if you are dying and starving, your body could kind of tax on that glucose reserve. I think it has a reserve of up to a couple of days. But when it comes to amino acids, the body has no reserve for them and needs raw material to build proteins. So uh, spirulina is arguably the best source of these building blocks to build proteins in your body. Uh, so spirulina is a powerful food. Spirulina could help save the world. It's a. Uh, there's so many applications that haven't even been explored in terms of growing spirulina. Some things that are just coming off the top of my head now. I envision uh, people setting up uh, plastic tubes in their homes. They're going to have kits, and in these tubes, there's going to be a controlled water environment. It's going to be controlled. The, the the pH will be controlled. The salinity of the water will be controlled and the temperature of the water will be controlled then people will be able to inoculate this water with spirulina and spirulina will grow sort of on tap in people's homes that's what i envision uh it's probably already being done i don't know i'm just pulling this out of the top of my head but that's what i envision for the future people will have spirulina kits and these kits will literally grow algae inside your house and you'll be able to kind of open up a little tube on the bottom and it'll spit out this dense nutrient rich water that contains this uh, infusion of the allergy and you'll just be able to drink that and that will help fight uh, hunger it'll help fight malnutrition all right guys so we spoke about moringa we spoke about spirulina and last but not least let's speak about you guys know what already yerba mate Yerba mate. Now, this is the herb that I've been uh, intimately acquainted with for six years now, since I lived in Argentina. 
found out about this herb. I'm not going to go into the my story with it, but suffice it to say, I really love I really love your bamate. Drink it every day. Uh, it's so powerful. It's so good. You know, it's a coffee replacement. It boosts the immunity. It enhances cognition. Uh, but I don't want to go off on that just yet. I kind of just want to talk about what do I feel? How do I feel that mate could help improve the world? How do I help that mate could help heal the world? Now, when it comes to mate, I look at it in a different light than I would look at spirulina and then I would look at moringa. For me, mate is more like food for the mind. When I think about mate, I think about the mind. I think about psychology. I think about social relationships. I think about bonds, bonds that are beyond biology, bonds that are beyond physical uh, physiology. I'm talking about connections, intangible connections with people, with others, with family members, and most importantly, with yourself. You got to love yourself, right? Now, when it comes to talking about mate in this light, this light, I really have no scientific backing. There is no scientific backing. I cannot quantify, nor can any other scientist quantify the sort of ethereal benefits of yerba mate. Uh, the thing that really kept me in Argentina for so many years was the mate. You know, the, literally the first night I was there, I was invited to sit down with strangers to share this drink, to share this straw with strangers. And after several months of, you know, connecting with these people, my entire life changed. I felt like I was getting sharper in terms of my mind. I felt like my body was detoxifying and allowing me to think better, allowing me to work better. I felt like my creativity went through the roof. And I didn't know what it was until I started to really honestly think about what has changed in my life. And the only thing that has changed in my life up until that point was the mate. I was just drinking a lot of mate. And as many people can attest, mate just has this ability to change the way you think. I don't know how it does this. It just kind of works on the mind. It kind of releases tension. It releases negative thoughts. It releases uh, anxiety, stress. And it allows you to, number one, connect with yourself. It allows you to connect with yourself. I don't know how it does it, but it allows you to kind of be comfortable with who you are as a person. And then secondarily, it allows you to create bonds with other people. Now, remember, guys, when we talk about medicine and we talk about healing and we talk about herbs, we don't need to just focus solely on physiological response, you know, uh, we also have to consider well-being. We have to consider uh, how do you feel? What are your relationships with people? Now, for me, mate is the best medicine for connecting with other people. Now, I don't really know how to quantify this. I can't quantify it, but I could just tell you my story and other people could tell you their stories is that when you share your mate with somebody, when you pass the gore to somebody, mate has the ability to induce bonds connectivity friendship it brings you closer to friends it creates new friendships and it just brings you on this vibe this level of peace and tranquility the more you drink mate the more this happens it has a compounding exponential effect it has a synergistic effect it's not just you and the mate it's you the mate talking with other people sharing ideas so the effects are not confined to the single herb. The herb, which arguably makes mate more powerful than any other herb on the earth right now, is that the benefits of this are not specific to the only to the to the single herb. The benefits of mate transcend the plant. It transcends the the organism, and it it, it overflows into creating situations, creating environments of well-being, creating environments that are conducive to building when i say building i mean building up the mind building up ideas building up relationships building up bonds building up community that's where i believe mate has the ability to positively affect the world uh to positively heal the world now of course yes mate has all these health benefits so many health benefits that i can name that you probably won't even believe me but once you do your own research 
and you know you read some books on mate there's not too many books out there you know I, I wrote perhaps the first book in english by a north american on yerba mate it's called mateology you could check that out on amazon but read other people's stuff too read uh elvira de mejia's elvira dr elvira de mejia from university of illinois in my opinion she is the foremost yerba mate scientist in the world read a couple of her journals read a couple of her articles they're all free on the internet you could just google them elvira de mejia and you'll see that your mate has so many health benefits it destroys colon cancer cells it increases uh the solubility of vitamins it helps foods be more healthier for you it increases digestion it it it, it boosts the mind and boosts the cognition it increases bone density uh, especially for women uh, who are who are uh, suffering from menopause, uh, not menopause, from uh, osteoporosis, which kind of correlates with menopause, but uh, does so many other things. It uh, has high amounts of antioxidants. It kind of makes green tea look like a baby. Uh, it, it totally surpasses green tea in health benefits. Uh, it, it it boosts the, your energy levels without any of the jittery effects that you get from caffeine, Red Bull, things like that. Uh, so I could go on and on about the health benefits of mate. Uh, it's just that you've already heard most of them. You know, if you guys have been watching these videos for a long time, you've known that I've been praising mate for so long. I just kind of wanted to emphasize the social benefits of mate today in terms of healing the nation. All right, guys. So we spoke about Moringa. Powerful shrub native to India, now grows all over the world in warm climates. Very good source of food. You can eat it like spinach, you can eat it raw in a salad, or you can make smoothies with the powder, or you could drink the powder with cold water, or you could actually make a tea with a loose leaf. Very powerful. Look into that. Grow your own moringa if you can. Then we head on over to spirulina, which essentially is an allergy, a blue green allergy. Uh, that grows in high level pH wa warm waters, uh, Mexico, Hawaii, uh, even parts of the United States and warm climates. Uh, you could eat it in the tablet form in pills. You could use the powder. Uh, you could use the flakes, many ways to consume it. Then of course we ended on yerba mate. Yerba mate, love the stuff. I drink it traditionally out of a gourd. You add the yerba mate to the gourd, and then on the bottom here is a straw with a filter on the end. You stick that in there. There's a whole process of doing it. You could look up the ways to do that on circleofdrink.com if you're interested. And you pour the hot water in the cup, then you enjoy like this. But don't let that scare you. You could drink yerba mate uh, in the powdered form put it into your smoothie or you could drink the loose leaf tea uh like out of a french press a teapot many ways to drink your pomata all right guys so thank you for being patient with me today last week we tried to do this but it didn't work google had an issue uh, i'm so happy that i was able to talk about these superfoods today especially moringa moringa is the one i really wanted you to take away today i really hope that you continue to do your research on moringa uh do some google re research on it i think you'll be pleasantly surprised read a book on it there's plenty of books on moringa on amazon.com the one that i recently read was this one moringa nature's medicine cabinet by sanford holst uh that's a good one to read if you're interested in spirulina uh here's a little book that i read a couple years ago it's just called spirulina and it was produced by uh, Jack Joseph Chalum and uh, you could Google this and you'll probably be able to find it and if you're looking for information on uh, yerba mate of course I'm gonna have to talk about my book read my book Mateology uh, and uh, pay attention to Elvira de Mejia the foremost yerba mate scientist all right guys if there's nobody that has any questions uh thank you so much for joining this mate circle sorry for the darkness over here i'm trying to use natural light but a storm's coming in and uh every tuesday 6 30 p.m every tuesday 6 30 p.m we're going to be trying to have this online circle if you have any ideas topics to talk about uh please shoot me an email at david at circleofdrink.com 
If you guys want to come onto the show, come onto the circle, please feel free to jump on anytime you want. Remember, guys, this is an online open community. It's not just me talking, hopefully not, but uh, I'll do that if I have to because I love what I'm doing so much. Uh, but if you guys ever want to jump in on these discussions, you're always more than welcome. You just need to uh, have some sort of Google account to participate with your video or just listen in. All right, guys. So until next week, Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please enjoy the rest of your afternoon wherever you are. Drink your yerba mate. Look into Moringa. And if you don't know about spirulina already, look into that. It's been a pleasure, guys. Have a great afternoon. Peace.